Bonjour, bonjour, fragrance lovers. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about underrated designer fragrances. As I've been working in a perfumery store, department store before, I've seen a lot of fragrances that people don't know about. And usually, unfortunately, the consultant here to help you will be drawn showing you a bestsellers. It's really occasional when someone advises you something very different. So this is what I want to show you today. What are the most underrated fragrances for men? Soon you will have the ladies one, so no worries, ladies. Right, so the first one is actually something that reminds me of a lot of memories and it's Lacoste, the eau de toilette, but the original one, so I think it's from the 1980s and it's probably why I chose this one is because my dad used to wear it and I always thought that it smelled really nice so maybe that's contributed to me taking this fragrance and it's a very simple scent, it's very common for the 80s you don't do fragrance like that anymore it's a woody aromatic so it's got like quite like a, a lot of character but quite soothing at the same time smelling like a forest at the beginning it was really trendy at the time to have this explosion of greenness and something very refreshing nearly minty and lacoste fragrances were actually really minty i don't know if you remember booster but i did love booster as well and i still like it and it smells really uh, ultra minty and really <laughs> projecting the freshness it still can be used now uh, of course you need to be mindful of that quite like vintage uh, style but it's very classic and nice for summer even for daytime during winter it's not a date scent really but it's sharp and clean because of this vintage style I probably say it's a bit more mature very simple uh, but I think it does the work Perfect. next one is one of my favorite designer house I own a lot of Cartier fragrances but I have to say I have a soft spot on L'Envol this side it's a shame because I don't see that often presented and it's really a shame like I see a lot of people showing other Cartier like Déclaration d'un Soir that is very trendy I mean always been a good classic but how about L'Envol? What is interesting with L'Envol is the perfumer herself said that it's a transparent oriental meaning it's something that is supposed to be very warm, charming, sexy but with a freshness so it's not really like a watery oriental fragrance how interesting in that for me it's got everything that you can say about niche quality and when I say niche quality I mean something quite unique I don't mean that it's more qualitative a lot of honey inside of this fragrance so it's a honey that is a bit sticky but it's not cloying so it won't be like that ultra gourmand fragrance because it does have that pinch of freshness and I feel it's the lavender that gives that it's very powdery because you have a lot of iris very unisex worn by the two genders very easily it does have a little bit of something gourmand but not too much it's very rich but it does have that herbaceous tone as well if you're looking for something charming sexy and different in the designer range I recommend to go have a look for this one next one is again one of my favorite designer house and I would say I will definitely put it just after Chanel, second position, and it's Hermès, and it's Un Jardin sur le Nil. So I don't know you, but I always love the selection of Jardin. I mean, you've got Monsieur Lee, that is really nice. Uh, I did like the Lagoon one. I don't, I know that 
not a lot of people like it but I really like it I was thinking about this fragrance because it's so different but what's interesting is you've got a little cocktail of mango fruit so it's quite exotic kind of smell but very refreshing and relaxing wet heavy wet um, fragrance so it's nearly like you're sitting next to a pond but an, an exotic type of pond and, it, and it's you know this heavy temperature but very hot juicy it's tropical and you really get all of this um, fruit that gives a round and juiciness to the fragrance which is like grapefruit orange mango like for holidays this is beautiful if you're looking for a different type of freshness highly recommend to go for that Number four is Jaipur by Boucheron. You need to enjoy vintage, okay? Definitely you need to enjoy vintage. But Jaipur is such a gem in the design scent. First of all, I, I have to say to you, I love Boucheron fragrance. They're ultimate classic and they bring all the charms of the Orient, especially the India, uh, because they have a lot of inspiration about Indian. And this is an Oriental, but spicy like you need to enjoy the spice because this is the indian vibe all this festival of color the spice is the cardamom the cinnamon so it's a spice that is not peppery it's not attacking but it will be full of contrast warmness and it's got like this vintage tone that you know before in fragrance uh, this is we were putting this bright lime lemon uh, that was really giving like a slight acidic scent uh, to the fragrance that's what it does to Jaipur you've got this really acidic scent that makes it quite vintage you want to look ultra classy but in a very classic way you really see like a very wealthy man wearing that really clean it's creative it's slightly resinous so it's very interesting number five is a fragrance that you need to get if you're on a budget it's Karl Lagerfeld and it's called Bois de Vetiver I love Vetiver, you know how I love my Terre d'Hermès, my Nuit de Megève, things like that this is beautiful if you're looking for a simple scent that does the job this is so nice so it's a woody aromatic again so compared to Lacoste it's definitely on the modern side it's very a simple composition get really that blood orange that gives juiciness to the fragrance so it's a vetiver blood orange scent earthy grandy smoky but in a very relaxed chill way i really saw the first time i smell it that it smells expensive especially because the price is really interesting you've got a touch of rose so it's making it quite unisex again so the rose gives not really that flowery side but gives a, a structure to the fragrance a bit of warmth of punchiness me it's a friendly scent it's daytime wear versatile and very friendly number answer. six is Nuit d'Isse by Issey Miyake it's not a safe option to enjoy something very different it's a woody spicy fragrance but don't expect to have that really woody spicy notes it's a very deep dark scent but it does have a little bit of synthetic feeling like it's very strange when you smell it <laughs> but it does have like a smooth and sweet wood effect and that's the ebony ebony always give like a, a touch of sweetness with with that woody tone which is really round there's a lot of incense that's why it's called like you know for the night because it gives a lot of deep darkness it's mysterious Mysterious. it's not comforting it's like more a bit harsh to me but it's got that really great personality and I feel it's if you know how to wear it and you've got the personality matching to that and you want something a bit you know the character is there um, you're gonna enjoy that and it's I think very creative for a designer scent as well it's quite ambitious as a scent so I do really really like it Oh, and as well, just a little advice, if you take this one one day, don't overspray, like absolutely no need, one spray and it's okay. Number 8 is Nartis. Oh la la, I just realized that I didn't talk about number 7, which was uh, Prada Luna Rosa Black. I love, love this sensual scent. Anyway, if you're looking for something quite sexy and easy to wear, you're gonna love the warmth of this one. And it's really projecting as well, is really delightful. So Rodriguez, it's for him. Uh Bleu Noir. I love Narciso Rodriguez. I think there's not 
a single fragrance I don't like from them. I really, really enjoy their range, especially because they know how to deal with musk. Um, Narcissa Rodriguez specialize themselves uh, as musky specialists, meaning like they always bring that cottony feeling, very powdery, very uh, mysterious, charming, fluffy. This is definitely compared to the other one for me, a younger scent. Uh, it's got very uh, simple composition, really nicely done. It, it is for me a perfect daytime outfit. But this one, what is nice is with this musk, with this cottony feeling, you do have a very seductive approach. It's quite sensual, it's charming, but it's not dark if you see what I mean. I felt the difference also with this one is quite spicy. There's this cardamom that give a bit of yumminess and that's feel, I think that's why it makes it so sexy because you, you enjoy that little touch of uh, coziness. So if you're looking for something modern, a bit younger, with a touch of softness and sensuality, this is a great pick. Number nine is a fragrance nobody likes. <laughs> Except me. <laughs> I don't know why like people are so tough with this fragrance. I think it's because the trend nowadays is all about longevity and I think people might have been disappointing with the longevity of this fragrance. Uh, I'm talking about Yves Saint Laurent, La Nuit de l'Homme, but the eau électrique. I've done a review on that if you want to have a look, but I really, really enjoy this fragrance. It, it, it was actually the one I preferred with the original because it's got something very fuzzy, very a uh, little bit electric, like they say fizzy, a fizziness that is very different. A bit more sensitive, romantic, um, yeah, delicate fragrance, an aquatic vibe as well that I quite like. It's this tone of apple that gives like a, a bit of softness. It is cashmere wood, so it makes it even more soft, nearly silky, and I really enjoy that. And what I like as well is with the time, I don't know, it's on my skin if it did that, but it smells slightly sugary and I really enjoyed this little touch of sugar while I was smelling an aquatic fragrance so it's really nice I think it's quite fizzy it's uplifting not giving that intense warmness vanilla tongue cabin scent but it doesn't really show that much of that of course you've got this vanilla that gives this slightly sugar tone but it doesn't show that much it's not if you're looking at the ingredient breakdown you might be disappointing with what you get but I can tell you it's quite fizzy, it's charming, it's playful. That's what it is. For summer, it's quite nice. Finally, number 10. My scent of yesterday, actually. I wore it all day and I really enjoy it. Uh, it's Pour Monsieur from Chanel. And ah, 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 I'm talking about the uh, eau de parfum, not the toilette. What is nice with the eau de parfum, it's got a nutmeg almondy kind of feeling so it makes it more creamier and warmer and you've got these intense lemony sharp citruses that are here so you need to enjoy the sharp citrus to enjoy this fragrance and so refined this is the ultimate gentleman fragrance something is not the, the the basic black suit that you're gonna see there no no it's a tweed suit it's refined there's details he's gonna take you chair to make you sit down that's what it is <laughs> monsieur was the first scent of Chanel uh, for men and it's really the classic fragrance a bit very citrusy and ultimate gentleman scent perfecto so I think I'm done uh, so please tell me in the comment which are your most underrated smell and uh, we're gonna do ladies very soon this week I wanted to give like two honorable mention to two discontinued gem that I used to really enjoy and this is Avant Garde by Lanvin sniff <laughs> it's gone and Mont Blanc Légende Intense uh, it's gone as well and it's very sad bye superhero Thank you for everyone who supported me on Utip account. You do have the link in my, the description. Do you just had uh, watch free ads? It give me a little tip. So uh, thank you for everyone who's doing that. I really, really appreciate. Don't forget to subscribe because there's a lot of viewers that not subscribe. But why? It's it's free. <laughs> we'll see you very, very soon. Bye now.